Hello friends, this video on body fluids and circulation part 12 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Now before we get into the circulatory system of human beings, let us discuss circulatory system of some other animals where the uh, system is a little simplified. So we will talk about the circulatory system of fishes. Now fishes have a two chambered heart. So now you will also see that as we discuss the circulatory system which is even though closed in different animals but still the structure of the heart also plays an important role. The heart in different animals are quite different. So now when we talk about fishes their heart have two chambers. So what are those two chambers? One auricle and one ventricle. So these are again new terms for you. Now auricles are the receiving chambers of the heart and the ventricles are the pumping chamber of the heart. Now let us suppose this is your heart. Let us just assume that this is not your heart, this is the heart of a fish. Okay. Now let us say it is divided into two chambers that is auricle and ventricle. So auricle are the receiving chamber that means it will receive blood and ventricles are the pumping chamber that means it will pump blood out so one chamber will receive blood the other chamber will pump out blood so auricles are always the receiving chamber so one way to remember it is AIR that is auricle receiving chamber and VIP that is ventricles are the pumping chamber so this is a small memory tip just to remember which is the receiving chamber and which is the pumping chamber Okay, so these are the two chambers which are present in the heart of a fish. Now, how exactly the blood circulation take place? That is how, the, because for all living organisms, they need oxygenated blood. That is blood rich in oxygen because they have to supply oxygen to the cells of their body. Similarly, they all want to send out the deoxygenated blood. That is the blood rich in carbon dioxide because each cell of the body is going to produce carbon dioxide as a byproduct of the respiration. So, so what happens in case of fishes? Now how do the fishes take in oxygen which is dissolved in water because fishes are aquatic animals. So they take in oxygen from which is dissolved in the water. So they have specialized structures called gills. So these gills take in absorbed oxygen from water. So this oxygen is in dissolved form in the water. So this oxygen is taken in by the gills. So now the blood of the fishes is oxygenated blood, right? Because it is rich in oxygen. So this oxygenated blood is then transported to different parts of the body. So it reaches each and every cell of the body. Now each and every cell of the body undergo the process of cellular respiration. As a result, carbon dioxide is produced. So this carbon dioxide which is produced is sent through the blood in the form of deoxygenated blood to the heart. That is to the auricle chamber of the heart. So deoxygenated blood reaches the auricle chamber. From auricle it passes on to the ventricle and from ventricle this deoxygenated blood goes to the gills. And from gills, gills again it receives a lot of oxygen so the deoxygenated blood gets converted into oxygenated blood. Again it goes to the body, again it comes back to the heart and this process continues. Now here two important things to be noted that there is no separation of oxygenated and deoxygenated blood. So it is all mixed up because there is just one path of flow. So the same blood is sometimes oxygenated, sometimes deoxygenated. So it is all mixed up, no distinction between oxygenated and deoxygenated blood. Secondly, these are the cold blooded animals that is they can change their body they cannot change their body temperature as per the temperature outside. So this is about the circulatory system of fishes. So here they have single circulation that is there is one single pathway of circulation of the body fluid and hence the transport of gases. So now let us look at the circulatory system for amphibians and reptiles. Now they have a three chambered heart. That is instead of one auricle and one ventricle, they have two auricles and one ventricle. So the, what are those two auricles? Left auricle and right auricle depending upon which side the auricle is located. 
So let us see how the circulation takes place in amphibians and reptiles. So here we can see that it has a heart something like this. Let us suppose this is the heart of an amphibian or reptile and it is divided into three chambers. That is two auricles. Let us say this is right auricle, this is left auricle and this is ventricle. So it has got three chambers. Now as I said auricles are going to be the receiving chambers. So both the auricles will be receiving blood and ventricles is the Ventricle is the pumping chamber, so ventricle will be giving out blood. Okay, so here we observe double circulation. So let us see how double, what is double circulation and how it happens in case of amphibians and reptiles. Now let us suppose in this case, what happens? How do they take blood? Now they take blood with the help of specialized organs called lungs. In fact, some of, in, in some of them, even their body surface acts as the medium to take in oxygen from air. Now, let us suppose a, uh, lungs take in the oxygenated uh, oxygen. So, once the lungs take in the oxygenated, it sends the oxygenated blood to the left auricle. The left auricle then sends the oxygenated blood to the ventricle. And the ventricle sends the oxygenated blood to the different parts of the body. So the oxygenated blood comes from the lungs to the left auricle, from left auricle to ventricle and from ventricle to different parts of the body. Now once it reaches different parts, it reaches different cells where each cell will undergo respiration. Carbon dioxide would be a byproduct. So they will give out carbon dioxide to the blood. Therefore the deoxygenated blood will come to the right auricle. So from right auricle the blood will come to the ventricle and the ventricle will send the deoxygenated blood back to the lungs. Right? So now what is happening in this case? There is one cycle or, or there is one path for oxygenated blood where the oxygenated blood goes to the left auricle, then to ventricle and then to different body parts. Whereas there is another path for deoxygenated blood where it goes to the right auricle, then ventricle and then to the lungs. So if you observe it closely that there is no mixing of oxygenated and deoxygenated blood. The oxygenated blood is concentrated or it is uh, within the left auricle and the deoxygenated blood is within the right auricle. So this type of process is known as double circulation because there is two circular pathways. So one pathway is for the oxygenated blood, the other pathway is for the deoxygenated blood. So this is known as double circulation. Now the question is how blood flows from the auricles to the ventricles. Now the blood is able to flow from the left auricle or the right auricle into the ventricle because of the high pressure of blood. So due to the high pressure of the blood it is able to flow from uh, one from the auricles towards the ventricles. But here if you see the mixing of blood is not there in right auricle and right uh, left auricle but there is mixing of blood in the ventricle because the ventricle is not divided into separate chambers. So the oxygenated blood also comes to the uh, ventricles from left auricle. The deoxygenated blood also comes to the same ventricle from the right auricle. So even though the mixing is prevented in the auricles but it could not be prevented in the ventricles. Now. Most of the amphibians and reptiles have a three-chambered heart. However, exception to this is a crocodile which has a four-chambered heart. So when I say a four-chambered heart, of course there the ventricle is also going to get divided into two. That is left ventricle and right ventricle. And that is how the circulatory system is in case of human beings. So human beings have a four-chambered heart. That is there are two auricles and two ventricles. Right auricle, left auricle. Similarly, right ventricle and left ventricle. So here there will be no mixing of the oxygenated and deoxygenated blood. So in case of human beings, it would be something like this. If this is the heart, it is well divided into four chambers. That is right auricle 
left auricle and right ventricle left ventricle so this is how this is how the human heart would be so the auricles will be receiving chambers and the ventricles would be the pumping chambers so this prevents the mixing of oxygenated and deoxygenated blood let us see how in human beings the cycle happens in human beings also the lungs take in oxygen from the air so it sends the oxygenated blood to the left auricle the left auricle sends the oxygenated blood to the left ventricle and the left ventricle sends it so this left ventricle it sends it to the different parts of the body so this is the oxygenated blood now from different parts of the body that is from different cells of the body the deoxygenated blood comes into the right auricle and then from right auricle it comes into the right ventricle and from right ventricle it goes to the lungs so that is the deoxygenated blood now the question is who carries this oxygenated and deoxygenated blood so for that purpose we have the various blood vessels to carry oxygenated there are specific blood vessels to carry oxygenated blood again there are specific set of blood vessels to carry deoxygenated blood now that is why in case of human beings not only human beings even for reptiles and amphibians the circulatory system being closed all the blood is enclosed inside tube like structures called blood vessels therefore there is high pressure which enables the blood to flow now higher rate of oxygen rich blood blood flow enables the birds and mammals to maintain high activity levels because their blood is rich in oxygen and oxygen is something which is required by each cell of the body to perform their activity so this is the overall picture of how the circulatory system works in case of human beings however we are now going to discuss about the different blood vessels and how exactly the blood circulation take place in human beings so this process is known as double circulation again because there are two separate pathways for circulation one is the pathway for deoxygenated blood and the other is the pathway for the oxygenated blood so it is called double circulation thank you please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos attempt free online test get free study material find tutors and mentors thank you once again